Coming up next, we get to this UFC middleweight division fight. Representing Sydney, Australia, he was born in New Zealand, Robert the Reaper Whitaker. He has put together one of the greatest winning streaks in the history of this middleweight division and did to Yoel Romero what few men have been able to do. Few men can stand across from Romero and just even live to tell the story right. of fighting him in the octagon. Robert Whitaker has done that twice and gotten his hand raised in the rematch. Whitaker is a truly, truly phenomenal mixed martial artist has a traditional background, but he also has a wrestling knowledge that is very underrated. He does not just get taken down, he's able to get back to his feet very well, and he has cardio for days. He's truly one of the best fighters in the entire UFC. And he's a grappler at his core. We talk oh, yeah. so much about his boxing, but the guys at Gracie Jiu-Jitsu at Smeaton Grange will tell you, this guy started as a grappler, still grapples in the gi during training camp. Robert Whitaker back in, ideally, in a big way for him here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this middleweight fight. Both fighters 29 years of age with similar height and some differences in reach. All right, now for the official introductions, the veteran voice of the octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record of 19 wins, two losses. He stands six feet, one inch tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Dracos Stillman Duplessis! And now we're producing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 25 wins, six losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds, fighting. Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Robert Whitaker! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? Start of this fight. I'm anxious, man. What a matchup it is, and it's gonna be interesting. And it's gonna be interesting to see who has the upper hand early. It's gonna be difficult to find out how this plays out, right? Striker versus well-rounded fighter. Who's gonna be the one that's gonna control where this fight takes place? Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Right hand punch. The They're pitch. certainly getting after it early. Ooh, what a punch. Off the cut lands for him. Oh, he was hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, nice jab. Jab by him there, and I guess on the other side, hard to get your offense going when your head keeps getting snapped back like a Pez dispenser. Every time he tries to go forward and use his own offense, the jab is stopping him in his tracks. He's doing a great job of fighting behind him. Oh, nice jab. And both guys really throwing with authority. Big punch, man, over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Man, 
How about the steam behind that Whitaker jab tonight? Robert Whitaker is a great striker. I mean, he has it all when it comes to the stand-up in the boxing, and that is on full display right now. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? And that one certainly found the target. He's throwing everything. Just over 20 total strikes have now landed for Robert Whittaker. Big ball for punch land. Now we get back to range. Oh! Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear the, the punches and everything landing. Both, both very powerful, very, very explosive. So we cross the 30-second mark in our opening round. Nice punch land over the top. Back and forth we go. That knee, that knee hurt him. Oh, big left. There's the horn, and what a round it was. DC, take us through the replays. Punch after punch. He landed him at will. He went right at his opponent, got in his face, and showed, this is my octagon. We are going to dance to the beat of my two. that is going to land, and he's got to really throw his whole entire body into those strikes. Stuff the takedown, no problem. Oh, roundhouse kick. Add that to his highlight reel. Nice right hand. Blocks that kick to the body. up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive than we saw in round one, and now starting to find himself in the pocket. Oh, and he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those punches. Whitaker gets tagged by that stiff jab. Huge elbow there. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down. Oh, now. he might be out. Oh, now he's got the tie from Daniel. If you're on the other side, what are you trying to do to get out of this potentially dangerous position? You gotta start digging your shoulder to a side and then trying to shove an underhook. You cannot bend down to try to get out of Muay Thai point. And he connects there with a... Oh! Huge right hand! He's in trouble. 
trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh! Oh! He's still there. He could be in trouble. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. He doesn't know if he's in the octagon or in the about the stage gives. Who's hurt? Serve him up. Go get him. Knock him out. The fight's done. Right, so his legendary chin holds up despite getting knocked down in that previous round. DC, take us through the highlight. He's as tough as they come. There has not been a guy that can take shots like this. Most times the night would be over. And gladly, gladly over after you take a shot like this. But this man is just too tough. Some people say he's too tough for his own good. He would not agree with you. He wants to fight. It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you are fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are. Because it's dangerous, but there are a lot of outs. And if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Just over three minutes now to go in the fight. Postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. Now look at him jumping in to try to get the finish. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. All right, working inside the closed guard now. Back to his feet. All right, it's late in the fight now. I don't need to be a judge to tell you that he is clearly losing. What is a fighter's mentality when you know you need a finish or you're getting an L? This is when you gotta go to the Nate Diaz mentality. Kill or be killed. You gotta throw everything at your opponent because if this thing goes to the judges, you are not gonna win this fight. Wow. And potentially a critical takedown here. All right, half guard position here. We'll see what he can do with it. A lot of weapons at his disposal from this dominant position. Oh, man. I feel for a wrestler, this is the most dominant position in all of fighting because wrestlers love control. Right. And to have your upper body free and your leg able to hold your opponent in position, it is like striking gold. Build your posture, throw your punches, big damage, but then always control the far side underhook. This is a great position for a top fighter. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage on. All right, trying to pass here. As Grover Teixeira might say, not today. Not today. Great job of following with the hips, keeping those legs locked and keeping them in full guard. Waiting seconds of this fight. All right, so the fight goes the distance. We'll take a look back at the action, but should go his way given all he got done in the striking game. Yeah, he did a great job of landing at will, mixing up the target, doing everything that he's become known for in order to cruise to a very good decision. I know he didn't get the finish that he wanted so bad coming in here tonight, but he had a phenomenal performance, and he showed that he's one of the best fighters in the world. Official decision now in the after three buff rounds, has We go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score this contest 30-27. The winner by unanimous decision, Robert Whitaker. Well, he did not get the finish that he certainly prioritized when we sat down with him in our fighter meeting, but a win is a win. He gets it done by unanimous decision. And he said he wanted a finish, but sometimes your opponent's not willing to play the game. In those instances, all you can do is control what you can control, and that's fight to the best of your ability. He did exactly that tonight.